We all know of the principle of camouflage in both the animal and insect world. Isn't it clever of these various insects and animals to think of disguising themselves like this? Of course, I'm joking. This design comes from our brilliant creator God. Biblical history is full of unexpected events, surprises. Let's look at a few of them. When Samuel was still a young boy, he had a job working for the priest and performing certain functions in the temple. One night, when he was sleeping, he heard his name being called, and he rushed to the priest and said, Here I am. Eli, the priest, said he didn't call him. But when Samuel went to sleep again, he heard his name being called yet again. This happened three times. It had been God calling Samuel, and when Samuel asked God why, this is what God said. See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. Not all surprises are good for those who are surprised. This was the case here, where God punished an entire family for the evil they were doing. Surprises in scripture don't just stop with God. When Jesus was teaching his disciples, he gave them this warning. Beware of the scribes and the hypocrites. Scribes are professional teachers of religion. We might think that Jesus should warn his disciples against atheists and criminals and against those who took no notice of his preaching, but he did not. His warning was to beware of those who were seen to be religious, but were hypocrites, because as the scripture says, their hearts were far from him. No doubt what Jesus warned about then could still be true today. Sometimes surprises can catch you. For example, as Jews were waiting for their Messiah, they were expecting a king who would destroy all their enemies and free them from any political control. They were expecting a Messiah who would be crowned as king and rule with absolute power. But the plans of God and his Messiah surprised and shocked them. The Jews had not understood that the Messiah was to come first as a suffering servant, and only when he returns does he come as a conquering king. Sometimes what we want interferes with what God says. The Jews did not want it to be this way, and that possibly blinded them to reality. This is actually one of the saddest events in all history, that the Jews missed Jesus. How could such a thing be? The long-awaited Messiah who had set up his never-to-be-destroyed kingdom? They missed him because they did not recognize him. They missed him because they were wanting and expecting their Messiah to be crowned as king. Instead, Jesus came as a lamb. Only when he returns will he behave more like a lion. Instead, their Messiah chose the cross. He did not operate according to their ideas of what should be. Their ideas were mistaken. This is why we must study scripture diligently, know it well, and understand the whole picture. Half of the picture is not good enough. Consider some of the surprises in scripture. The parting of the Red Sea, you'd never forget that one. The ark and the accompanying rain, Rain which had never been seen before, and therefore the people mocked the idea of it. Jonah being swallowed whole by a whale, a burning bush, etc. And we haven't even touched, touched on the miracles which Jesus and his disciples performed. Our God is the God of surprises and the God of miracles. Having said that our God is a God of surprises, this is not to say that he is not trustworthy reliable and dependable. He is absolutely trustworthy and his character is unchanging. He is always merciful, loving, and just. It is not because God changes. It is because we cannot always predict what his plans are or how he intends to work them out. God does not have to let us know everything. The scriptures do not tell us everything. You know what it's like to try to see your face in a very dirty or cloudy mirror? How hard it is to see clearly in very dim light. That's a bit like what we have. We may have only a hazy outline about certain things. They will become clear when Jesus reveals them. Some things are so certain it is as if they are written in stone, as good as done. 
the fact that Jesus will return. Other things, often the how or the way God will choose to act, these we simply don't know. We do not know the date of the return of Jesus. However, it is certain, and we are to be prepared. One interesting example of the disciples not knowing everything is that Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? We know only a fraction of the things Jesus said and did. One of my favorite scriptures says that the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. We have a lot to learn. God wants us to search for him. Is it possible that sometimes he even hides from us so that we will seek him as in hide and seek? I think it's possible. It is because we are not told the day at the hour of Jesus' return that we are to be ready always. Jesus told a parable about 10 bridesmaids who had not been careful about having the oil they needed for their lamps. Because of this, they missed out on the entire wedding. We must not miss out on the greatest gift God could give us. Jesus is sharing his inheritance with us, the entire world. How should we go about living our lives? We pray for protection from the evil one, and we pray not to be deceived. We ask God for wisdom, and we try to search it out in the scriptures. We do our best to obey, to imitate Jesus, and when we fail, we ask for forgiveness. We work very hard to be worthy to enter the kingdom prepared for us. And just in case you would like to see it again as I did, here is that wonderful camouflage video.